tutorial, I'm going to add structs to move our shootables into random starting positions and clips so that zombies and players can't walk through the shootable. First, we're going to make a new uh, points Easter egg. Copy that. Save it. This is a new one. Now let's do C and then change this to C. We're going to keep points because I'm still going to give points for this Easter egg. I'm going to change the model to a skeleton. And I'm going to have it so when you shoot it in the head, it does that. Okay, so let's add a clip. make this clip a script brush model. And then set the clip as the target of the model by selecting first the model, then the clip, and pressing W. There we go, so we should have another points Easter egg. Let's just change that. To C. three of them uh, with the clip. And we'll compile that while we work on the script. In script we have to add another EE, like always, uh, except for, oops, we're, we did a, we copied a points one, didn't we? And we put a C there, like that. Okay. And then we'll build and we'll test. Here we are in game. And they're on fire because we copied one of those. I'm getting 50 points. And 5,000 points, just like this shootable. So we need to add the clip part. So under model, we're going to say clips equals get entity array model dot target. And that for each clip in clips. Clip disconnect paths. So that the zombies don't try to walk through it. And then after we shoot it, we want to, for each clip and clips, clip delete. Now we only have one clip and we could have used git ent model.target and then just said clip disconnect and clip delete. But in case for some reason you would need multiple clips, I just made it an array and then I iterated the array 
with the for each loop. Uh, next, or before we delete, actually, we'll want to connect the pass that we disconnected up here. And we have a potential error here. And that's, what if the model doesn't have a target, which only one of our Easter eggs models have a target. So this would give us an error at this point, uh, trying to get that. So we'll initialize clips as an array, an empty array. That way we don't get any errors when we're trying to iterate. And it'll just say, hey, it's an empty array, move on. Uh, but for this part here, we'll have to check if is defined model.target. Then we can reassign clips. to the array of clips. When it gets to this part, if it didn't have a target, clips would be empty and it would just skip over. And we can link and build. And here we are in game and you see the clips. I can't walk through them. And now I can. It looks like I have to make that trigger bigger. because I was shooting it but it wasn't registering I don't actually like the fire, so I removed the script effects ID from the model, so it should no longer play that. Next, I'm going to compile Lincoln test. Here we are in game, uh, the flame's gone, the explosion is stew there. It's easier to shoot their faces now. And we're ready to add structs to randomize their positions. The method I'm going to use today requires us to stamp the prefab, which I don't really like doing because at that point uh, I have to edit every single one if I want to make a change. But I find it to be the best way to set up random positions. So we're going to add a struct at the zombie's angle. And if you select the struct, then the model, and then enter the origin and hit enter, the struct will go towards the origin, will go to the origin of the model. So next we'll move the struct to where we would want the model to possibly be and turn it to the angle we'd want it to be. So for that, for example. Okay, and then we'll select the model, then the struct, press W, and now the model targets the strut. It also targets the clip. But that's okay, because the clip is an entity and the strut is a strut. We can use two different functions and when we get an array of clips it will not get the strut and vice versa. So that's one position. Let's say over here is a, another possible position. And we'll do the same thing. First model, then strut, then W. Like so. And then we'll compile and then work on the script. 
So now, after we checked if there's a target, uh, we're going to come in and we're also going to see if there's structs. Structs equals get entity. Oops, <laughs> these are structs. Struct get array of model dot target. If structs that size is greater than zero, meaning there are structs assigned as a target of the model, we're going to randomly select one. So structs equals array randomize structs. Okay, so destination equals structs zero. We're going to grab the zeroth one, or the first one, the zeroth one of the array. And before we move our model to that position, we want to make sure the trigger comes with us and the clip comes with us. So for each clip in clips, clip. link to model and then self is the trigger so self enable link to and self link to model and then we can model move to that struct or that destination, so dest.origin. And we can do this uh, fairly quickly. We don't need any of that. Um, we want to add a weight, uh, just a little bit extra, to make sure that it gets there before we move on uh, to the next part, disconnecting paths. Uh, we want to make sure the clip makes it to where we want to disconnect paths. We also want to set the model's angles to the destination angles so that it's turned the way we set it up. And since we're using structs, we have to make sure we're using structs up here. So then we'll link and test and here we are in game and now the skeleton's over there and the clip is right where it should be and the trigger was right on his head so we'll do a, a, f a fast restart and he's in the same spot And this time, he's over here. So let's say after we shoot it, we want it to play a sound. So after it's triggered, uh, if is defined, we can use a KVP called uh, script sound. We'll do that on the trigger, which is self. And we'll say from the model, play the sound of self.script sound. So we'll have to add that KVP to our trigger. sound and we're going to use ZMB to Ching because I know that one works for the purchase sound and I think I've added it to these already yes I did okay 
so it will compile link and build all right now if we get close and shoot them place the cha-ching and I got my 5,000 points so let's take one of our older prefabs and stamp it now that we have everything set up we should be able to add structs for these so add a script struct Select the model, then the struct, and press W. And then let's put it over here and have it facing the door. Copy that, put it on the other side, or not door, but entrance window. Select the model, then the struct, press W. Well, we can do this as many times as we want one by the box w. okay so let's compile and link and test okay I tested and I goofed um, it was not linking the trigger or moving the model if there wasn't a clip because I had it inside the for each clip loop. It should have came after, but still inside the check. That way it links the trigger if there's random destinations and then moves the model. Let's link and try it again. And now that skull is over here, facing the window. That skeleton's over there. Let's reset it. This time the skull's on the right side, facing the window. That skeleton is on the right side again. Let's reset it. Okay, we're in the game, and the skeleton's over there, and one, two, three, four, five, and the sixth skull is over here. points for everyone and 5,000. There's a clip from my way. Playing the sound and 5,000. Let's do a reset. Okay, I reset it and the skeleton's over here this time and the skull's over there this time. Let's try another reset. And this time, the skull's over here, and the skeleton's here. So you can add as many structs as you like, put them around, add them to each prefab for each Easter egg, and you shouldn't have to change the script again. So that concludes my script of Radiant tutorial series and unless there's something else you want to see let me know